everyone, Alexa Dunn here, and today I am here with a writer pep talk. My harsh writing advice video, the few that I've done, have been a huge hit with a lot of people. You might have found my channel through that video, if so, hi! And I've been honestly kind of delighted and amused to see the different responses to it. A bunch of people are like, yes! eviscerate me, harsh, harsh advice, I am reborn, I'm gonna go right now, and then some people really don't like it and are demoralized by it, and I totally get it, it's not for everyone. That video was an experiment, it was an affect that I put on for a bit of fun, and if you are more familiar with my channel, you know that I'm way more into kind of pep talk style anyway. I try to be as positive and supportive as possible while also being realistic, but I thought, hey, I should make a video for you guys that is literally a pep talk that you can turn on anytime you need a little boost about any of the things I'm going to talk about. I have a whole list of just like pep talky things that will hopefully make you feel better with whatever you are struggling with in writing and publishing. There's still going to be plenty of like kind of like real talk in here, but it's all with a positive pep talky bend. So the first thing I want to remind you of and reassure you of is that most people will never finish a book. Tons of people want to write a book and most people simply never actually accomplish it. So if you are doing the thing, if you're almost there, if you've done the thing, you are ahead of most people who want to write a book, ahead of most writers. And you should be really, really proud of that. If you're doing it right now and you're not done yet, keep on pushing. Seriously, just getting to the end is going to be a huge accomplishment. The thing is, the hardest book you will ever write is that first book, because before you write a book, you don't know if you can write a book. So once you do, well, you know you can, so you are over the toughest hurdle. Mind you, writing and publishing has tons of other hurdles, tons of things that are hard, but I really do feel that the hardest thing you'll ever do is complete that first book because it's that confidence piece, simply knowing, well, heck, I did it once, that is going to get you through so many other books and so many other challenges. And then I want to let you know, to remind you, I actually said this in the harsh writing advice one, but a lot harsher, which is first books, first drafts of first books are messy imperfect, and that is okay. When I talk about how first books are bad, what I really, really mean is first drafts of first books are usually bad. And that's not to make you feel bad about it, but to actually make you feel super, super normal. All of us, the first time we vomit out that book and actually get to the end, we don't quite know what we're doing. And I mean, you shouldn't, you've never done it before. And you have to learn by doing. So don't worry too much about perfectionism. Know that you are joining a cabal of writers, a community of writers who all wrote messy first drafts of first books. And that's the thing, my next little pep talk is that you can revise a bad book. Bad goes in quotation marks. They're usually not as bad as you think they are, or they are salvageable. All books need to be edited and revised, and you can absolutely revise a first ever book into something that's publishable. It's been done. I have friends whose first ever published book debut with a traditional publisher was the first book they ever wrote. Of course, the book that got published wasn't the first draft of the first book they ever wrote. They did many, many revisions of that book to get it to that final product, but it is definitely possible. I actually got a literary agent on my first ever book, but not on the first draft. Nothing happened for like two thirds of the first draft of my first book, and you know I had to revise that, but then I did get an agent on that book. We went on submission and it didn't sell to publishers, but I got pretty far and I'm really proud. And there's hope for you too. You don't necessarily have to abandon the first ever book you write, but sometimes you do, and that's okay too, because most people don't make it on their first book. It is definitely more common to make it, so to speak, to have a book that you know is ready and publishable when it's your second or your third, or honestly, it could be your fifth, your seventh, your 10th. One of my favorite authors, Beth Revis, her first published book was her 10th written novel. 
It's different for every writer and there's no one way to succeed, but I can guarantee you, speaking from experience, every book you write, every new book you write, a new story that you start, teaches you something about writing because writing is different with every single book. The experience of writing a book is different with every book, which actually sometimes like they're all hard, but in different ways, but you learn different skills with each one, both the drafting process and the revision process of each different book. And so you get better over time as long as you're moving forward with new ideas. And that's something I really want to stress for you. Writing is a skill. It is a muscle something that you can develop and get better at. No one is birthed fully formed as an amazing writer. Every writer has to work to develop themselves. Now, some people do start out with more inherent talent than others, or they have formative experiences that do give them a leg up. But I believe in the value of hard work and determination. And something that I can tell you is, I have had over the many years many talented writer friends, some of whom honestly I think are more talented than I am, way more talented than I am. But the difference between us is I pushed through to finish that first book, to finish multiple books. You can't do anything with talent if you don't do anything with talent. Actually sitting down and doing the work and writing books can go a very long way. And to that whole editing point, just want to remind you that every single writer, including and especially professional writers, have to edit their books. And I know that it's really easy to play the comparison game, to pick a book off the shelf that you really, really love that is amazingly written go, I could never do that. That is a natural feeling. Imposter syndrome is normal. Hey, you're normal. I mean, professional writers feel it too. But I want to remind you that those finished copies aren't the first drafts, usually. There's a few really famous unicorns who do get to publish first drafts, but I would argue that's actually to their detriment. There's a few super famous people where I'm like, this could have used another version. <clears throat> but most writers can't get away with publishing first drafts because we're not like famous and rich. And so what you see on the shelves has been worked over many, many times. So please don't hold yourself to the standard of a final published book. Every writer has to go through the editing process. So cut yourself a little bit of slack. Don't compare your first drafts or rougher products to the final products of people with more kind of experience and professional teams behind them. Speaking of process, I want to pep talk you a bit about writing processes because I think a lot of shop talk and comparison game goes into ooh, the writing process, partly because, I mean, as a writing community, we're always kind of sharing what works for us and trying to help others. And here's the thing about advice. Good advice is advice that works for you. All other advice isn't advice that works for you. And one person's individual process or aspects of their process can be complete garbage for you and other parts maybe work or, or reflect what works well for you. And we talk about plotters versus pantsers, discovery writing, all these different methods of writing. And no one method is better than another. Any writing process is okay, as long as it works for you. Your process is also an organic thing and will shift and change over time. As I mentioned, every book is different and they're hard in their own ways. And so you will have to adjust and change your process depending on book. And honestly, as long as you can finish, as long as you can get through it and you're reasonably happy with what you have and then you can edit it to hopefully make it what you want, your process is fine. All right, so now I wanna talk a little bit about publishing, querying, trying to get published. And this is good news for you, and you might not believe me, but promise me it's true. <sighs> if you have written a novel, completed a novel, done revisions on it, worked with some critique partners, done like good, smart, thoughtful revision work. If you've researched agents and you kind of know how the industry works and you write a coherent query and your pages are polished and you follow the guidelines, you're ahead of most writers. You are actually in a minority of writers who are out there trying to get traditionally published. Here's the thing I want you to know about your competition for getting traditionally published, it's smaller than you think it is. The pool of 
talented writers, like writers with both good ideas and good prose, working in concert with each other with a solid query that's following the guidelines, that's kind of hitting all the cylinders of the market and timing and so on, smaller than you think it is. So your competition isn't everyone who's written a book and wants to get published. Your competition is good writers who follow directions, basically. And you, there are no hard and fast numbers, but most agents I've talked to say that it's maybe only 30% of queries that are really hitting on all those cylinders. So this I offer as a pep talk, because if you're doing your due diligence, you have a better shot than you think. And here's the thing, good writing does matter. I offer this pep talk, and I'm going to offer the reverse side of this pep talk as well, because I think that people easily get discouraged by the market, and we all can think of a book that we didn't think was particularly well written, or authors who we don't think have the best craft, but inexplicably they're making millions of dollars, and I'd say those are outliers for the most part, because what I want to emphasize is that if you really love writing, and you put in the time and you put in the work to develop yourself as a good writer. I do think that being a good writer, technically proficient, thoughtful, you know, kind of on the mark with craft, I think that makes a difference. A writer who can write relatively fast, a clean draft with good prose is worth something in a professional writing space. Those skills will serve you. So meaning I don't want you to get discouraged because it can take so many people years and years and years of putting in the work and writing different books and maybe the luck and the timing of the market aren't working for you, but I just want you to know that none of that work is wasted or in vain if you're developing yourself as a writer. And the flip of this pep talk is good story matters too. You can be the most technically proficient writer in the world, but if your story isn't singing, if it's not engaging, if it's not hitting tropes that people like, if it's not right for the market at the time, it doesn't really matter. I mean, ideally you have both working together at the same time, but this is actually, you know, kind of the pep talk for those of you who don't feel that you're necessarily the strongest writers. First of all, there's time to grow, as I already mentioned, but two, Honestly, sometimes if the timing works out for you, if you've got a great story, it doesn't matter if you're not the next great American novelist. And to both of these points, hard work and professionalism does matter. And I do believe that they have long term payoff. So even if you're not feeling it in the short term, and you've been at this for many, many years, and you haven't yet kind of gotten to that next step, you haven't gotten the what frankly is external validation that we need sometimes we need to feel like, oh, I'm getting personalized rejections from agents, so they must like something or you get an agent, you go on submission, you sell a book. Obviously, we all want to sell a book. But I am here to tell you that putting in all of those years of work and developing yourself, being professional, training yourself to write well, write quickly, write on deadline, write cleanly, be kind and respectful to peers, be kind and respectful to not peers, because you never know when they're going to become your peers, but basically being an all around thoughtful and professional writer, it has long term payoff. You might not see it now. But in the grand scheme of things, people like to work with people who work hard, produce good product and are pleasant to work with. So all right, this next one is for all my friends out there who have gotten a book deal and have had to write their first book on contract. It is a nightmare. I'm here to sanity check you. It's called second book syndrome, sophomore book syndrome. It is the first book that you write after your first book deal. So it's the first one that you write on contract or you write for your option. You have less time to write it than you ever had before. Very often there's no time to even send it to critique partners or sometimes even your agent. It is your most raw work going to an editor and it's hell. And honestly, it will be the hardest book you will 
ever write, all things considered. Something's gonna break. <laughs> Either the drafting process is going to be difficult garbage or the revision process is going to be difficult garbage. For me, it was revision. Um, and it also took me so long to write that second book. Like, finding the story was so tricky for me. It's hard, and you are not alone if you find yourself in this situation. Whatever that second book you write after publishing or getting a deal for the first, it's going to be the trickiest book you ever write. Also partly because of expectations. You feel this pressure of, I want to make people happy who liked the first book, but I want to like make people happy who hated the first book. Sometimes it feels like your best second chance and <sighs> there's a lot of pressure and you're not alone. It's hard. You're fine. We all get through it. And honestly, after that, it's, it's like this barrier you have to like push past because after that, I think books do get easier. So this next one is something that I know a ton of you struggle with. You are not alone. I have been there. And the thing is, I will pep talk you, but also nothing I say can like solve it or make it easier, except to say that it is really, really challenging to find great critique partners. If you are struggling, it's kind of normal. There's a lot of kind of trial and error and starts and stops when you're first trying to find those great right CPs. And sometimes you can even find those great right CPs, but then you grow in different directions. Sometimes they stop writing or you switch genres or all sorts of things happen. And so it's it really never ends kind of finding new fellow writers to create as your writer community and your critique partners or beta readers. It does though get kind of easier the further you get, like you meet more writers, you get a much better sense of who you click with versus who you don't, and a much better sense of kind of time investment. But the hardest I'd say is like the first or second books, the first few years that you're trying to find critique partners, definitely the hardest. But I think it's worth pushing through. If one avenue isn't working, like one place that you're looking for CPs isn't working, try another. Because once you find those right people, they are worth their weight in gold. But the pep talk part, it's really more of a sanity check is you're not crazy <laughs> if you're finding it challenging and difficult and uh, just push through. All right, so to round out this pep talk, these last few things, I'm just gonna leave you with something hopefully to nourish your soul and keep you going. You are good enough. On your most garbage day, when you feel worthless, like you don't belong here, like your writing isn't good enough and your story, no one cares and no one will ever care. You are good enough and there's someone out there for your story. Someone does need your story. Now, the real talk part of it is the market can't always support your story, or you are good enough, but maybe not yet on this book. But it doesn't always have to be traditional publishing or self-publishing. Maybe you put it on Wattpad, or it's just finding a friend, or it's moving on to the next thing because you are good enough and there is a reader for your work. You're just not there yet, but you'll never get there or find that if you give up. The key thing is not to give up because writing is a very long game. Writing and publishing is a very long game. And there's this kind of tricky mix of we want people to read our books and that's when you get into kind of business, like consumer culture, but it's mixed with art and creative passion. And it's something that you love to do, but you also have to kind of connect it to that piece of well, to find a reader, it's not as simple as pouring your heart onto a page. There's a lot of work that goes into it and a lot of business sense, and it doesn't happen overnight. Specific to traditional publishing, it's a super long game, guys. You gotta be in it to the, for the long haul. So you're not crazy if you feel like it's taking forever. It feels like such a long shot. It's awful. Yeah. There's so many awful, terrible moments in the whole publishing journey. There are going to be moments that could extend into days, weeks, hopefully not years, but where you feel that imposter syndrome when you just feel like you're not good enough and it's never going to happen. And the best I can offer is you have to war with that horrible feeling. Just 
It's almost like fake it till you make it. You have to have that confidence in what you're doing to push through. And sometimes, even with the confidence in pushing through, it still isn't good enough, so to speak. Like, it still doesn't work in that moment. But that doesn't mean it will never work. Because the thing is, I also said this in my Hirsch writing advice video, people were like, hmm, that's not true, where I said there are no original stories. There are original executions. There's the story only the way that you can tell it. There's the tropes that are tried and true and beloved for a reason that work in a unique combination that you come up with and a writing style and a voice that is uniquely yours. There's room for all kinds of stories, even if similar stories have been told before, because tropes live in breathe evergreen forever for a reason. There are things in stories and emotions and feelings that people want and they will never stop wanting. So while you always have to strive for something fresh that's, you know, less derivative, don't psych yourself out that oh, every story has been told. Other people are so much better than I am. You never know if you're the next thing, if you're the next one, if you're the next breakout story, you might change things, you might make waves, or you might not. Sometimes it's just good enough to be published at all, and that's okay too, because publishing is complicated, it's a rocky journey, there are so many hard days, but I do think it's worth it. Every single bad or annoying or frustrating thing that will happen to you, every setback will only make you stronger as a writer and a storyteller and a business professional because this is a business. As long as you love writing and it's worth it to you, it is worth sticking it out. I also know that there's a sense of running out of time, that you have to write fast, 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 now, 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 publish, publish, publish. It'll always be there. I know that there are some naysayers who are like, bookstores will die, reading will die. That is not true. <laughs> Harry Potter created a whole new generation of readers. Millennials and Gen Zs read more than the generations before them. We still love physical books and bookstores, but ebooks and digital books are very strong as well. I actually think ultimately we're headed to a healthy and strong book market. What's really changed is that there's more people writing books than ever before, partly because of the accessibility of information about writing, that everyone now has a computer or a device on which they can write, which wasn't always the case before. There are fewer barriers than ever to writing and publishing. It means a more crowded and saturated market, but I also think it means that books will live forever. Stories will live forever. So I know that feeling of impatience and rushing and, and feeling like publishing is leaving you behind. I get the feeling and you're allowed to feel that way, but I'm also telling you that it's not true at the same time that it's true. Take your time, because whatever time you need to write and incubate and nurture your talent, your story, multiple stories, it can be multiple books, don't forget, whatever that time is and whatever happens, I truly believe is meant to be. I know that's a little rah rah she she, but this is a pep talk and I truly do believe that everything happens for a reason. I feel that way about my career and I feel that way for all of you, even in the darkest moments. And again, I do allow you the darkest moments. I'm never going to be the one to tell you not to get sad, depressed, pissed off and frustrated with writing and publishing, but I am here to tell you that you can do it. I believe in you. I wouldn't have this channel and be giving all of this advice if I didn't believe in writers as a whole. I'm here to help whoever needs to hear this because you don't know. Maybe you're the next one. Maybe that book is the one, but it won't be if you give up. So don't give up. Keep going, keep writing, do it as long as you love it. If you stop loving it, take a break. <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot more I could cover, but this is your general pep talk. Writing is hard, you can do it. You're ahead of a lot of people for even trying, and I believe in you. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. 
I guess I could make another pep talk video if I think of things to pep talk about that I left out of this one. I hope it's helpful. Whether you like tough love, I have videos for that, or you like this softer warm hug approach, I am here for you. Let me know down below in the comments, did any of this help? Are there specific things you need a little pep talk about? And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. I post new videos two to three times a week. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, guys, genuinely and from the heart, happy writing.